Aider's an AI coding assistant that makes programming a lot more productive and a lot more fun. Now you can use a variety of large language models with Aider, including models from OpenAI, Anthropic, Grok, and even your own locally hosted LLMs. But Anthropic just released their Claude 3.5 Sonnet model, and the combination of Aider and Claude 3.5 is really blowing me away. In this video, I'm gonna show you how quick and easy it is to use Aider to build complex full stack apps. And the best part, we won't write a single line of code ourselves. In about 15 minutes, we'll have Aider generate a fully functional REST API in Java and a Next.js user interface that uses that API. And not just the code, Aider's going to generate our unit tests, our README files, our open API, and our Swagger documentation as well. And it's going to give us instructions for building and running our apps. A few simple prompts and Aider does all of our work for us. You may be wondering why I chose Java for the API. Well, mainly because almost every AI coding tutorial uses Python. And there are a lot of Java developers out there. And I chose Next.js because frankly, it's one of the most popular UI frameworks. That and before this tutorial, I would never developed an application in Next.js. So I wanted to see how far Aider could take me in developing an application using a technology I had zero experience with. Now you don't need to be a Java developer or an XJS developer in order to follow this tutorial or to build these apps yourself, but you will need to install these. I'll provide instructions for installing all of this in the description below. And you'll also need to set up an Anthropic API key to use Claude 3.5. I'll also provide a link to all the prompts that I used to have Aider generate the user interface and the API, about 15 simple prompts in all. Okay, let's get into it. I've created an empty folder called Task API and I opened it in VS Code. Now in a terminal, I'm gonna start Aider using the Claude 3.5 Sonnet model. Aider's gonna go ahead and initialize this project as a Git project for us. Now let's ask Aider to generate our project for us. So we give it a prompt. We're asking it here to generate the initial project for our task management API. We tell it that users should be able to add, update, delete tasks, as well as get tasks. And we also tell it what technologies we wanna use. We wanna use Java and Spring Boot. And then we also give it a little bit more instruction to tell it to generate the project, but we don't want it yet to implement all of the methods for our project. Aider starts working with the Claude large language model to determine what artifacts are required for our project. At the end, it describes those artifacts to us from the Maven POM file that contains our dependencies to all of the different Java classes and interfaces it wants to create. Notice that it's including an H2 in-memory database so we can test our app. Ader now asks permission to generate all of the artifacts for us. We're gonna say yes to everything. And now let's take a quick look at what Ader generated. Here's our Maven POM file and as requested, it generated a Spring Boot 3.2 project. Let's take a look at the task controller real quick. We see the Aider provided methods for all of our API endpoints. However, it didn't provide implementations for these methods. This is because we explicitly ask it not to provide implementations yet in the prompt that we gave it. So why didn't I just ask Aider to generate the entire fully functional API right from the start? Well, at least as of this recording, even the most powerful LLMs like Claude 3.5 work much better when we give them focused tasks and we work iteratively, just like we human developers do. The main difference is that LLMs do each task much faster than we do. Keep this in mind as you develop with AI assistants. Don't give the LLM too much to do all at one time and you'll get a lot better results. We'd rather not have to stop and start our app as we make code changes. Let's ask Aider to take care of this for us. So it makes all the code changes required for live reload. Now, once our app starts, Spring Boot should automatically reload it as we make updates. Now let's start up our app. Find the main Spring Boot application class, right click, select Run Java, and our API is up and running. When we first started Aider, it automatically created a .getignore file. However, at that time, it didn't know about our project. Now that it knows about our project, let's have it go ahead and update the .getignore file with the appropriate entries for our project. It goes ahead and suggests the entries that we need to create, explains them to us. Let's go ahead and accept that, and it will update the .getignore file for us. 
As aiders make an update to our project, it's automatically committing those changes to Git, and it's generating some very descriptive Git commit messages for us. We have a runnable app so far, but we haven't implemented any of the REST API endpoints. And we can see this by opening Postman and submitting a create task request. Nobody's returned, indicating there's no implementation. Let's go ahead and fix that. We're gonna ask Ader to implement the create task functionality for us now. You can see in the task controller where the REST API endpoints are defined, the methods are empty. Ader's now going to go and figure out what changes it needs to make to implement the create task functionality, comes back and explains the changes it's making to us, and applies the changes. Let's confirm that we can create tasks now. I'll bring up Postman, and we'll hit the create task endpoint once again. This time it's working, as indicated by the response body. And we can see in the application log that the record has been inserted into the in-memory database. Let's work on implementing our next endpoint, get all tasks. So far we can create tasks, but as we can see, we can't retrieve them yet. We can see the controller hasn't implemented the method for us, so let's have Ader implement the get all task implementation for us. It implements the changes. Let's go back to Postman now and verify that the changes took effect. We create a new task since we restarted the app. Now let's try the get all task endpoint again, and we see that now we can retrieve all the tasks. So far we can create a task and we can get all tasks. We have a few more REST API endpoints left to implement, such as get task by ID, create a task, update task, and delete task left. We'll have Ader go ahead and implement all of the rest of the endpoints for us. It'll make the code changes, tells us what changes it's making. And now we can see from the code that it has indeed implemented the controller updates and the service implementation updates. So let's go ahead and test this out again. Again, we have to create a task first since we're using an in-memory database. Let's go over to get task by ID. We saw the task ID was one. So now we see get task by ID is working. Let's quickly verify that get all tasks is still working. It is. So let's go ahead and update a task. We know we have a task with an ID of one that exists in our database. We'll go ahead and update the description for that task to reference Q4 2026 analysis. We'll go back over to get all tasks by ID and we can see what our previous payload showed, Q2 analysis. Now when we retrieve it, it shows our updates. We haven't implemented any unit testing for our application so far. Let's see how Ader can help us generate unit tests for our application. We'll go ahead and ask it to implement unit tests for the task service update task method. It generates the code, and then it describes the unit test and what they're checking for us, and then asks permission to create the test class. So we say yes, and it creates the test class for us. All right, let's take a quick look at the test class it generated. And we'll go ahead and run our unit tests by right-clicking, selecting Run Tests, Now we'd also like to have open API documentation automatically generated for our REST endpoints. If you're not familiar with the open API, don't worry about it. In a minute, I'll show you and it'll be clear what this is and what it's used for. So we ask Ader to enable open API documentation for our project. It makes the edits to the code. Now let's go over and take a look at what the documentation looks like for our project. Let's open up the automatically generated open API documentation. As you can see, this is a JSON document that describes the various endpoints and the requests and responses for each of those endpoints. This is going to come into play in a bit because we're going to feed this into Ader to help us generate a Next.js UI for our REST API. A Swagger interface is automatically provided as well. We won't go into this very much, but just know that it's there in case you'd like to experiment with it. Of course, every project should have a readme file that describes the project and the technologies, how to build and run it. So we're gonna have Ader create our readme file for us. We're asking it to create a readme in markdown format, explain the application, the major technologies used, include the project structure, the main components and their relationships, how to build and run this app. So Ader examines the project and it generates our markdown readme file for us. Let's take a quick look at that. 
So you can see it's nicely formatted. It's included all of our technologies. It gives an overview. The project structure is included. So it shows us the layout of all of our directories. And it then goes on to describe the main components used in the application. So this is very nice. It's something that most developers won't take the time to do. And you can use this to automatically create your readme file up to date with the as implemented implementation of your code base. Very, very helpful. Now let's create a user interface for our API. In a separate instance of VS Code, I've opened an empty project called Task UI. And I've opened a terminal and I'm gonna start Ader again with the Claude 3.5 Sonnet model. Ader has a command slash web that allows it to scrape websites and add what it finds on the website to its context. So remember the open API documentation that we reviewed for our task API before. We're gonna pass the URL for that documentation to Ader. It's gonna scrape those documentations and now it's going to have those docs in its context. Now that Ader has all of the details of our task API in context, we can ask it to create our UI project for us. We're asking it to create a Next.js React framework user interface project that allows us to create new tasks and to get all tasks. We're gonna start there for now and also to create all the artifacts required to install and run the project. So it creates all of the artifacts. It also even gives us instructions for installing the dependencies using NPM and also running the project. So now we go ahead and say, yes, go ahead and create all of our artifacts. A peek at some of the code it generated. This is the main React file that contains the code for creating a task and getting all tasks. Now we'll go ahead and install our dependencies. We go back to Ader, which tells us exactly how to do this. We copy the command. We go to another terminal. We run the command, npm install. This uses the package.json dependencies to install all of our dependencies. All of our dependencies are installed now. Let's go ahead and fire up the application. We'll go back to Ader. Ader tells us exactly how to do this, npm run dev. Copy the command, we'll go back to the terminal. We'll run the command, npm run dev, which will start up our user interface. Now it gives us the URL. Let's go ahead and click and follow the link. And this is our initial task manager user interface. Think about what we just did to create that UI. We simply pointed Ader at the API docs for our task API, and it used that knowledge to automatically generate a user interface that can consume that API. This is known as in-context learning, and to me, this is one of the coolest and potentially most powerful features of AI coding assistance. I could have also pointed Ader at documentation that describes my coding conventions and styles, and then had it generate code according to those coding styles. Let's try creating a task with our task UI. Create task, nothing seems to be happening. So let's take a look at our browser developer tools to see if we can figure out what's going on. Ah, so here we see this is cores exception. So cross origin resource sharing issue. So let's try to have Ader help us resolve this issue in the user interface. We'll go back over to Ader and we'll ask it to help us resolve the cores issue. We want to allow this application to call localhost port 8080, which is where our task API is running. So Ader goes ahead and implements the cores solution for the user interface, it makes the edits. Now let's go ahead and check our user interface again. We'll clear the console and we'll try creating another task. Great task. Okay, so we still have a cores error, but it's different this time. I happen to know this is an issue on the task management API server side. So let's go over to back to the server. We're now back at the task API. And now we're going to ask Ader to help us resolve cores issues on the server side. So here we're saying, I'll update the API to allow access from the user interface, which is running at localhost port 3000. So now Ader makes all the changes to the task API. As part of that solution, it implements a new class called web config. So here is the web config. Now this isn't a productionized version. We don't care right now. So we'll clear the console and the UI. We'll try to create a task and voila, we're good now. Let's ask Ader now to add the rest of the task API functionality to the task user interface, such as create, get by ID, and delete. So Ader does all of the updates for us. 
Let's go check the user interface and see. We can see here that the user interface has changed. Now we have edit button, we have delete button, and so forth. Let's go ahead and test it again by creating a new task. Now, we can see that we can edit. Let's go over to Postman to verify that these changes are actually taking effect. So here you can see the two tasks that are shown on the user interface and the Postman get all tasks. Let's check the update. We'll mark the task as completed. Let's go and fetch the tasks again. And in Postman, you can see completed is now true on task ID one. So the user interface is working. Let's go ahead and edit the task. We'll edit the description for the first task. We'll just say test completed and save. Back over in Postman, let's just confirm. We'll fetch the task again and we can see that work too. We have a fully functional user interface. What if we want to change the theme? Can Ader help us there? Let's find out. Let's ask Ader to apply a modern dark theme to our user interface. So you can see that it applies various changes to our styles. And now let's take a look at our new user interface. So with a simple prompt, Ader was able to give us a completely new look and feel. Regardless of what you believe about AI's role in the future of software engineering, I believe that the single most important thing that you as a software developer can do today is to become very skilled at integrating one or more AI coding assistants into your workflows. Thank you for watching this video. And if you'd like to see more videos on this topic or similar topics, please let me know in the comments below. Also, if you enjoyed this video, please do give a like and subscribe, and I'll see you in future videos.